from big companies giving away free cheeseburgers on September 18th that people think is composed of strange meats, mummified alien bodies found with eggs inside of them, to a YouTuber who creates homunculus creatures in his own home. All this and more in this installment of the Dark Theories Iceberg series. Ariel here, and welcome back to one of my never-ending Theory Iceberg videos, where we speak on a various amount of topics that I find across the internet. If you enjoy this series so far, consider subscribing to the channel and checking out my social medias. My Instagram is at Book of Alice, and Twitter, or X I guess, that's what they call it now, is at Book of Alice as well. And here's a shout out to our channel members. Shout out to Rosie Posey, Switch Player 101, Green Stick, Blue Crown G2, Lomili, and Pedro. Consider becoming a member, you get access to early videos and you get other perks as well. But without further ado, let's get into this Dark Theory Iceberg. TikTok Doom Scrolling You know the For You page on TikTok? Yeah, according to some, it is precisely curated to your taste, in order to trap you in a scrolling loop of doom where you have no free will and can never stop scrolling, called doom scrolling, which I am not ashamed to have done many times before, shortening your attention span and making you stupider. I know it's not a word, but it sounds right, or maybe it actually is, I don't know, TikTok made me like this, I guess, not the point. China, the birthplace of TikTok, is supposedly giving their TikTok audience on their For You page smarter and more educational content, things that inspire and encourage the youth to enter STEM fields, STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, their overall goal being to educate the youth for the future, while at the same time serving the American and Western population brain-rotting content to sabotage their future, putting them ahead and promising a strong, prosperous country, while we watch pranks and ass-shaking videos like Fulcrum says. Future, watching ass-shaking videos on TikTok, do you think that's gonna... Uh on all, they want us to be dumb sheeple. That's what the theory puts forth, at least. But is it really an evil algorithm that's out to get us? Or are we eating ourselves from the inside by making these trends popular in the first place, by liking and following these supposed brain-dead accounts? At the end of the day, people are deciding what they stick around to watch, and if it's not up to par with what they want, they simply have the choice to skip and watch the next TikTok. And they do. That's why not every TikTok is viral, and some boring ones stay at small view counts. It's sometimes not the algorithm's sentient choice, but rather every single person that decided to comment and like Daniel Larson's TikTok of him complaining about having to eat mac and cheese. We really can't blame China for that. I mean, we can, but I don't know. To now ask my care provider if I could get macaroni and cheese, if that's all we fucking have in this house. This tastes like cow piss. Cow piss. I want to know who the fuck put jalapenos in this. My mouth is on fire. Put that all the way into the trash. We have popular shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians, The Eric Andre Show, and many others like it for a reason. We enjoy art at its most extreme and messy form. Reality TV, man. I mean, we have reality TV. We love it. My For You page has some fun science vids on it, as well as other education content. Your personal For You page suggestions really depends on what you enjoy watching the longest and interact with the most. Meaning, if you're served nothing but brain-dead content, it most likely means you enjoy watching that type of entertainment. And I don't blame you, it's not like Chinese content is any better either. They have their fair share of brain rot type vids too. Once again, I want to reiterate, I did not invent that brain rot or brain dead term. I'm using it in context of the conspiracy theory that we are being dumbed down by China. I can't tell you the amount of comments I get of people thinking that I hold each and every single belief in a 30 plus minute video about complex topics. Either way, if you're an adult, you should be able to discern what's BS and what's not. I mean, get a grip, people. It's not like they're forcing us to watch NPC content, let alone forcing us to donate money to them. As for the kids, it's the parents' job to monitor what they're watching and using the kids' mode version of apps if available. But even then, sometimes things slip through the cracks, like ElsaGate. Like anything else, nothing is perfect, except for YouTube. Yeah, no propaganda or brain rots on this site for sure. Almost guaranteed, damn near. Sarcasm. The Ultra Rich versus You. You ever think maybe, just maybe, whoever they are, the ultra rich elites, I guess, are 
pinning the left and right against each other to the point that they are so blind to the fact that they are being exploited and used like pawns in this game we call life. Well, that's the theory. It's not left or right or any political side you lean towards. It's you versus the ultra wealthy upper class that doesn't want you to know that in numbers you have the ultimate power and can topple them at any given time by simply refusing to work, the thing that ultimately creates them wealth. But that's only possible if everyone unites, which seems like something close to impossible nowadays. Homunculus videos. So back in the day, maybe like the late 2000s, early 2010s, YouTube had this weird category of videos known as homunculus videos. This was back when YouTube was less regulated and overall more Wild West-like. Now, these homunculus videos involve people experimenting and creating new life forms. The trend seemed to be popularized by the Russian YouTube channel titled How to Make, which taught people how to create a homunculus, a supposed microscopic but fully formed human being from which a fetus was formerly believed to develop. So I guess it's like a deformed type creature that developed from a human fetus. He would supposedly inject chicken eggs with his bodily fluids, aka human specimen, aka splooge, to create these Frankenstein critters. His sole purpose was to create a real homunculus and put those that were creating the fake homunculus videos to shame. But people seemed to be put off by it all and began expressing their ethical concerns to the YouTuber. And of course, there were the non-believers and skeptics of it all. But most people seemed to love the series as it opened up a number of interesting possibilities of what would the creature turn out like and what if you tried injecting a larger egg and what would that creature look like then? I searched up what the largest eggs were and their ostrich eggs. Look at these, imagine how big those suckers could get. Now, after injecting the egg with a special sauce combination, he seals it and places it in a bean to keep warm. 10 days later, he finally unseals it and notices a strange smell coming from the egg, as well as growth on the outer part of the shell. So he cracks it open to reveal what's been growing inside. And uh, it just gives me the chills watching it. Take a look. Но все-таки жив. Ну, так может быть вам будет лучше видно. Не совсем может быть удача, но тем не менее достаточно. It's his baby kind of if you think about it because he does use his own human specimen. There's also another video in which he instantly kills it when it starts to spit something out of its presumed mouth. He just slams it with a large buck and bam, its guts are everywhere and this is where you start to scream, fake, this is impossible. You can't just inject an egg with your special juice to create a spore character, right? It's almost widely accepted to be a hoax, but fun to watch, as the comment section would tell you. Either way, reality didn't stop this guy as he went on to create batches of these eggs in order to find the development process of his slimy friends. After 40 days, he goes on to crack his eggs, and we get to see the abominations. Sadly, nothing came from the eggs though, as he explains something must have been wrong with his specimen from the beginning of the experiment, leading to the failure. Imagine explaining this hobby to your friends and family though. Finally, in video 4 of his series, he is able to replicate the homunculus that spit at him, but instead of killing it, this time he preserves it in a jar of water for a while. We see it much bigger now, as it has grown something out of its mouth. He decides to feed it meat, which, you know, I would wish that the creation was vegan out of all things. It being carnivorous just adds to that creepy factor for me. I don't know about you guys. But if it broke out of its jar and it was starving, I don't want it coming after me. Imagine that little thing just crawling on the floor, right? Ugh. But I guess you can just throw a book at it or something. Rent your home forever. There's a theory out there that says Wall Street does not want you to buy a home, but rather they want you to keep on renting homes that they buy in bulk, single family homes that nobody will ever own or even come close to owning. As they buy out entire neighborhoods, the population will be forced to rent their housing. This eventually makes it harder for low income people to build generational wealth and escape poverty and leaves all the profit of home ownership to the investment companies and rich people of course. Some say that they are waiting for the housing market to favor the buyer and become more affordable, although experts claim that this is a fairy tale dream as they believe that the prices are going to get even more unaffordable as time goes on. 
well, at least for the general public. The practice of zoning has also helped increase housing prices. That's when the government divides the land into zones. For example, limiting businesses and operation near residential areas. Some cities have even banned the construction of multi-level housing near single-family homes, meaning housing like duplexes or fourplexes, which is supposed to be more affordable than a large single-family home, are banned and aren't allowed to exist near single-family homes due to the zoning laws. It's straight up illegal to do this in places like Atherton, California, where multi-family housing is non-existent. Only only single-family homes are allowed to inhabit the area. Though Cali did eventually pass a law in 2021, scrapping single-family zoning laws in certain areas though, it's not going to fix everything instantly as well. States like Oregon are trying to tackle the problem by passing a measure that requires city with more than 10,000 residents to allow duplexes to be built in the areas zoned for single-family homes only, allowing for more affordable housing despite the zoning rules. But is this even enough? Mexican Alien Bodies Two mummified bodies were put for display in front of Mexico's Congress. Mexican journalist Jaime Massan, the person who presented them, claimed that they were the remains of alien creatures, explaining all this by showing their scientific analysis and study results that proved that the remains were not 100% from Earth and had no genetic similarities to human beings. Believed to be about a thousand years old according to carbon dating, they were found in Peru inside of a mine in 2017, preserved in a rock that is resistant to bacteria and fungi that would have otherwise eaten at the mummified remains. Mexican doctors even had a look at it and ran x-rays on the bodies along with other tests, finding that the skeletons were indeed all attached and had never been joined together superficially. They are single skeletons that were not assembled by a person, nor were they tampered with in any other way on their insides, according to the doctor examining them. One of the mummies was even found to have eggs inside of its abdomen, believed to have died while pregnant. Most of the scientific community is not accepting of this theory and believes the mummies are a hoax, asking for other labs to take a look at them and conduct similar studies to see if the conclusions are similar. Schizophrenia in Regions It is believed that Western schizophrenia is much different from other cases of schizophrenia from around the world, and this is proven to be true due to the fact that it's known to be a culture-bound illness. While some Eastern cultures treat it as a spiritual phenomenon, Western cultures tend to simply view it as a medical issue. According to Stanford News, even the hallucinatory voices heard by those with schizophrenia are said to be shaped by the local culture. So if your culture is more family oriented, your delusions will involve your family more. Or say if you're deeply religious, it might involve a more religious theme, like God telling you to do something. It's all relative to your surroundings. In the United States, anthropologist Tinia Lurman found that the voices heard are harsher and more demanding, while in places like Africa and India, the voices are rather playful, gentle and kind, leading some to conclude that this has something to do with the toxic aspects of our western culture. Here's something interesting to note. While the African and Indian schizophrenia patients stated that they had a majority of positive experiences with the voices they heard in their head, American patients did not report any positive experiences with the voices they heard, but rather reported them as being violent and very hateful. In the country of Ghana, they even found that the majority of subjects reported hearing God himself speak to them and that the voices were good. While in the city of Shani, India, the subjects mainly heard friends and family members talking to them as if they were giving them advice, with fewer threatening voices reported as opposed to the American subjects. Instead of viewing the voices as intruders entering one's private space like Europeans and Americans did, the Indians and Africans viewed the voices as entities that they could form relationships with, and not as intruders and or violators of their private mind. Emphasizing the common perspective in the West that revolves around one's own self-identity, instead of thinking through the lens of community and relationships. Fake Cheeseburgers September 18th is National Cheeseburger Day in America, and what's more American than cheap cheeseburgers given out by major corporations like Burger King and McDonald's. 50 cents, yeah, 50 cents was the price for a double cheeseburger at McDonald's fast food places on September 18th. 
we gonna finally hit this 50 cent cheeseburger. I ain't gonna lie, I've been seeing people online talk about some, oh, don't try it, we can't trust these cheap burgers, 50 cent, da 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 da. Because you guys have social media, they too cheap, da 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 da, this and that, right? In the effort to commemorate the holiday and make a few bucks at the same time, it seemed like a win-win scenario, but not really, as some demanded to know why they were so affordable. There had to be a gimmick, ain't no way McDonald's or Burger King are taking a loss in this economy, right? Some people started to question if the meat in these cheeseburgers were actually meat. By some people, I'm talking about the people on TikTok. They started to ask the real questions, like if the meat was made out of Soylent Green material. For those who haven't watched Soylent Green, it's a 1973 dystopian film in which the people from the future, the year being 2022, are left to eat nothing but a strange substance known as Soylent Green, as overpopulation and pollution has overcome them. A food that has no labeled ingredients. That is until Robert Thorne, the protagonist and YPD detective, finds out what Soylent Green is actually made of. And it's not high energy plankton from the ocean floor as the television propaganda would push in the film. It's made with human beings. Soylent Green is people, making everyone lift on earth cannibals. Though I don't think McDonald's is committing crimes against humanity, it's too messy. Others speculate that these corporations are testing out a new type of meat on this day, though nobody is actually specifying what it is. They use The Simpsons as a source, specifically the episode where Krusty the Clown's burger joint begins selling something called Burger Squared, in which they feed grade A beef to cows and then slaughter those cows to serve to the customers, basically cows eating cows. This ends up turning those who consume the burger into flesh-eating zombies. This of course didn't end up happening in real life, but people did record a few zombie vans traveling across the country in TikTok. Californication exposes New World Order in the song Californication by the rock band Red Hot Chili Peppers, there are lyrics that seem to call out things in Hollywood and the world in general. Some have started to dissect the lyrics furthermore on social media and have found the dark topics within them, claiming that its lyrics have predicted the future and that the songs are calling out New World Order agendas. One line in particular that has been called out states, born and raised by those who praise control of population, meaning that the masses were raised by people who have a specific agenda in mind, to do nothing but control the people. There's also another line that says, everybody's been there, and I don't mean on vacation. Most likely alluding to Epstein's Island, as some have pointed out on social media, like Joe Brogan. Basically, the island wasn't just used to vacay, you could do that in Cancun. It was meant for something else. Also, the famous line, psychic spies from China tried to steal your mind's elation, is being linked to the recent spy balloons found floating over United States airspace, most likely coming from the Chinese government. And little girls from Sweden, dream of silver screen quotation, is apparently calling out Greta Thunberg? I don't know. What do you guys think about this one? I mean, that's the whole purpose of songs. You can take the lyrics and apply them to something else you can relate to. Mass appeal is what sells. We also can't forget the lyrics, space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement, referencing the whole Stanley Kubrick directed the moon landing theory. Getting high on information may also be alluding to modern day social media, with phenomena like doom scrolling. The song is pretty complex though and can be interpreted in different ways. But what do you guys think about this theory? PFAS carcinogenic, forever chemicals. We have heard this hot new word everywhere as of late, or at least I have recently, PFAS being one of them. Forever chemicals can be found in things like nonstick pans, fast food wrappers, nail polish, dental floss, cleaning products, water resistant clothing, pesticides. I can keep on going for a while off this never ending list. The point is that it's not good for us as human beings and could lead to things such as cancer and so on. Scary thing is, is that these substances do not break down explaining the forever and forever chemicals. Now, here's something alarming. According to a 2023 study by the US Geological Survey, 45% of all the nations tap water contains one or more types of PFAS, forever chemicals. And those are the only ones that we can detect so far, as the USGS admits that they can only detect up to 32 types. Who knows what other kinds of chemicals are in there? 
Interestingly enough, the study was the first of its kind to test for these substances in regulated public and private water supplies throughout the country. And get this, the samples were collected directly from people's kitchen sinks, meaning we might have been zipping on the zombie water for a while, or at least some of us have. I know my mom told me not to drink from the tap when I was a kid, although sometimes I would. Current studies suggest that exposure to these chemicals may lead to things such as reproductive effects such as decreased fertility or increased high blood pressure in pregnant women, developmental effects or delays in children including low birth weight, accelerated puberty, bone variations or behavioral changes increased risks of some cancers including prostate kidney and testicular cancers reduced ability of the body's immune system to fight infections including reduced vaccine response interference with the body's natural hormones increased cholesterol levels and or risk of obesity and all this data is coming to us from the environmental protection agency the epa Although there are thousands of PFAS, most studies only pay attention to a small number of them, well-known ones, with the possibility of different effects and levels of toxicity, making it hard to track and assess specific chemicals and their effects on our health over time. It's a pretty complex issue, and because kids are still developing, the biggest fear is that these chemicals are more harmful to children due to them being more sensitive and coming heavily into contact with them as they drink more water, eat more food, and breathe more air per pound of body weight compared to adults. Younger children also tend to put things into their mouth, which can come into contact with PFAS in carpets, dust, and cleaning products. They even conducted a study finding that more than 96% of Americans have at least one PFAS in their blood. Now, you may be thinking, I drink bottled water, I should be safe, right? Well, not exactly. According to this lovely study titled Detection of Ultra Short Chain and Other Per and PFAS in US Bottled Water, in which they screened for 32 PFAS, they found that 39 out of the 101 bottled water brands that they tested contained PFAS, and one bottled water brand in particular even had 15 out of the 32 PFAS substances they tested for, though they didn't publicize the brands that were tested, so I guess we gotta guess. Though you may be safe, as they also found that bottled waters that were labeled as purified contained less PFAS compared to spring water, which didn't go through a reverse osmosis filtering method, which that method may be the reason for less contamination in purified water. Meaning that the water might not be turning the freaking frogs gay. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. Ugh, ugh, serious crap. But it may be leading to cancer and a plethora of other negative effects. Jesus Hong. This is a reference to the Family Guy scene where Stewie crosses over to the other side and finds out that Jesus is actually named Jesus Hong, not Jesus Christ, and that he's Chinese. An interesting joke touching on the topic of a man named Hong Chen. This man was the self-proclaimed brother of Jesus Christ himself. Born in 1814, his father was a farmer and local official who invested in his son's future through the form of education. Sadly, he would go on to fail his imperial examinations and would be forced to work in agriculture. Though, at the age of 22 years old, he would return back to the city of Guangzhou to retake the imperial examinations. During his stay there, he would witness a foreign missionary by the name of Edwin Stevens preaching Christianity to the locals, even receiving a pamphlet from them titled Good Words for Exhorting the Age, written by the missionaries' interpreter, Liang Fa. These pamphlets contained Bible verses and other materials, which Hong would briefly look over but not pay much attention to, and would fail his examination for the second time. In 1837, he would go back to retry the test but would fail again for the third time, causing his mental breakdown and being delirious for days. During this time, he would dream of visiting heaven and meeting his heavenly father and of course his brother, Jesus Christ, alongside other heavenly family members. His heavenly father would then argue to him that people on earth were worshipping demons instead of himself, giving Hang a sword and golden seal to slay the demons with. For the next several years, he would go upon a normal life, teaching at schools, not really acting upon the supposed mission given to him by God. That is until 1843, when he failed his exam for the fourth time. 
prompting a visit from his cousin who would inspire him to read the Christian pamphlets. That's when he had his awakening, making him realize who all those people were in his vision from years ago. They were the Christian figures from the book. Upon this revelation, he would burn all his Confucian and Buddha statues in his house and the books. Preaching to his friends and family about his vision, they would join him in this revolution of sorts by going into small villages and destroying their idols. Due to the actions of Hong and his converts being viewed as sacrilegious, Confucians persecuted them and had them resign from their posts as village instructors. One day, he decided to go visit his cousin up in this rural mountainous area, only to find thousands of followers who proclaimed him to be the Messiah, so he stayed and lived amongst them. And by 1850, he had somewhere between 10,000 to 30,000 devout followers. By that time, the God-worshipping society had expanded to four areas in China, declaring war against the demons who they finally noted to be the Qing dynasty, the final dynasty of China, ruling from 1644 to 1912. By 1852, they had gathered 2 million followers, known as Taiping Heavenly Kingdom, who were loyal to them over the Qing dynasty. He even tried to seize Beijing, but failed. Hong was then found dead in 1864. Some say he was poisoned, others say he ended his own life, which eventually led to the fall of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom. Yangno In Korean folklore, there exists a demon creature by the name of Yangno, described as a demon that eats the rich. More specifically, this entity eats the Yangban of Korea, a social class of noblemen who were known to have power and prestige among society in medieval Korea's class system period, standing at the top of the Korean class system. Though not much is known about the creature's lore, it is often seen in theatrical plays in different regions within the country. In one specific play titled Su Young Yo Yu, it is revealed that these young no creatures were casted out from the heavens after committing crimes, inhabiting earth with the main purpose of consuming 100 of these rich folks known as the Yangban. If they complete this mission, it is said that they gain entry back into heaven. Normally, these creatures have a long red slash orange face with scaly material usually draped over the person who is playing them. They also hold the flutes or willow pipe that they play in order to alert individuals that they are present. The only seeming weakness of the Yangno is its empathy towards its own family members, meaning that it is loyal to its relatives and the rich could escape them by simply claiming that they are the father or grandpa of the creature, which in turn will show mercy, respecting the family member by not eating them, showing the nobility of the young no creature, in contrast to the lying rich man, though most young bun would boast about their nobility and get eaten anyways. In real life, the young bun, the rich class, actually enjoyed watching the characters, as the demon was entertaining to them. March 2nd, CIA report on Stalin. This entry is in reference to the declassified CIA report that seems to praise Stalin. Not only that, it also admits that the West exaggerated in the way they reported leadership as dictatorship in a communist sit-up. The CIA report states, Even in Stalin's time, there was collective leadership. The Western idea of a dictator within the communist sit-up is exaggerated. Misunderstandings on that subject are caused by lack of comprehension of the real nature and organization of the communist power structure. Stalin, although holding wide powers, was merely the captain of a team, and it seems obvious that Khrushchev will be the new captain. However, it does not appear that any of the present leaders will arise to the stature of Lenin and Stalin, so that it will be safer to assume that developments in Moscow will be along the lines of what is called collective leadership, unless Western politics policies forced the Soviets to streamline their power organization. The present situation is the most favorable from the point of view of upsetting the communist dictatorship since the death of Stalin. There will not be a dramatic purge, and as much as the MVD, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, has already been cleaned up, and the party and the army have not been in the hands of Malenkov's favorites. 
there can be expected only a normal replacement of officials and the reorganization of the top-level administration of the party and the government. It is hard to draw any parallel between present events and those of the 1920s when Stalin was ascending to power. There is now no organized opposition inside the party or in the Soviet Union in general. As the communist rulers and evidently also the Soviet people see it, there is a grave outside menace. Since the death of Stalin and the blow which was given to the power of the secret police, the Soviet internal situation has been in a state of flux. The new Soviet setup needs time for consolidation. The struggle between national-minded Titoist elements in the Soviet leadership and those who think in terms of the more orthodox international line is still going on. No improvement in the food situation can be expected. The promises of Malenkov to improve the poor material conditions of the masses were not kept, and as much as the communist leaders were unable to keep this promise, particularly because of accelerated war preparations, they had to find a scapegoat, and thus Malenkov resigned. Bulganin impressed those who had worked with him in the state's bank, including a famous expert on banking, with his high intelligence, mild manners, and capacity to learn in a very short time the most special and difficult problems. It is difficult to anticipate any withdrawal from the Soviet foreign policy line unless there are concessions from the West with regard to the ratification of the Paris Agreements. There is a possibility that a continuation of discord among the Soviet leaders may lead to a softening of the Soviet position and to a recognition by Molotov of his incompetence in the conduct of foreign relations. The Soviet leaders, however, have recognized that the balance of power has changed in favor of the West. They are now endeavoring to change this balance, as can be seen from the shift to accelerated war production and the attempts to disrupt Western unity. The aggressiveness of the Chinese communists may also be part of this endeavor. A stiff position on the part of the West towards the USSR probably favors the continuation in power of the more stiff elements in the Soviet leadership. Basically, Basically saying if the West keeps on pushing the USSR with policy, they will continue to be strict with their governing, in ways the West might not like. Spontaneous Generation is Real so, the spontaneous generation theory states that living creatures could arise from non-living matter, like say for instance mud, sand, or rotten apple, and old banana peel. People thought that fleas could randomly arise out of dust, or that flies could arise out of something like rotten meat for example. Aristotle being the first to record his thoughts on spontaneous generation, writing about how maggots would emerge from rotten meats, and this guy's idea went seemingly unchallenged for almost 2000 years. People believed this to be true, until 1668 when Francisco Reddy disproved spontaneous generation with his jar experiments, where he took three jars and put a slice of meat in each. One had no lid, one had a mesh lid, and one had a tightly sealed lid. He then let them sit for a while until the flies were collecting, and found that the decaying meat did not produce the maggots. They had only appeared on the jar with no lid, where the flies were able to come in contact with the meat. They did not appear in the jars where the rotten meats were isolated. And then in 1748, John Needham sought to disprove Reddy's experiments by building on top of the discovery of living organisms not visible to the naked eye through Van Leeuwenhoek's first true microscope discovering microorganisms. He called them animacules though. What if these microscopic living organisms come from something like the meat itself, proving spontaneous generation true? So Needham started by setting up a round bottom flask with gravy and then heating it for a while in the effort to kill any living organisms inside of the gravy. He then proceeded to loosely seal it and observed. Thinking that all the organisms inside the flask were dead, he believed that the only way that living organisms could appear in the gravy was if they spontaneously generated from the gravy itself. And to his surprise, living organisms began to appear in the gravy. They started to generate in the loosely sealed jar, concluding that Francisco Reddy was wrong all along. But keep in mind the word loosely sealed, meaning it was still exposed to the outside air, leaving room for contamination. He also didn't heat the flask to a high enough temperature for a long enough time. But then in 1861, Pasteur's Swan Nick flask experiment took place, where Louis Pasteur took two glass flasks in the shape of a swan's neck, in this shape, and put nutrient broth in them, bringing them to a boiling temperature to kill any microbes. 
once sterilized, Pasteur broke the neck off one of the flasks, leaving the broth exposed to surrounding air. The other flask was left untouched. After a while, he found that the dust settled into the open-air flask that had its neck broken, but the other open-air flask that was still intact had dust collecting, but at the end of the swan neck, not being able to work against gravity and travel up the neck of the flask, it couldn't contaminate the broth. While the broken neck flask showed microbial life growing and clouding the sample, the other fully intact one showed no life at all. The broth remained clear finally debunking spontaneous generation. And those were all the theories and or mysteries I had for you today. If you enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel, commenting, leaving a like, and becoming a member. It really helps me keep this operation going. Um, I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.